Today I've got some brand new spooky home decor DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project will be a mesh and burlap wreath. Okay, so I got this little plaque and I actually bought this at Dirt Cheap and I paid $4 for it. Love Dirt Cheap. It has a little bit of uh, issues. We're going to take the tags off. We're going to um, take off that hanger that was messed up. Of course, could have been easily fixed, but we're not going to use this sign for a sign. We're actually going to put it on our wreath. So this will be actually five projects in this video. Because you can certainly do a sign without putting it in the middle of a wreath, and you could definitely do that with this one. I believe this originally came from maybe Target, because a lot of the overstock type stuff that I get at Dirt Cheap um, does come from Target and Amazon. So be sure that you clean after you sand, of course. I didn't need to break out the big sander for this, just a little bit of work, just to smooth it out. Sometimes there's a little splintering, so I just want to get all that out so I don't hurt myself doing my crafts. But I'm going to take a little stiff brush here and just go in between all the little detailed areas to remove any dust or, you know, sawdust or anything that might be stuck down in there. Love the little witch's brew. Love it. Okay, so here's the wreath that we're going to use. And you can see this is going to work well, but the sign will go on top, not underneath. I'm going to use some flat black spray paint and spray paint this green wreath. Uh, base and also I'm going to be painting over the sign too. I'm going to spray it with black spray paint. I did one coat on each one of these. Now we're going to, while those dry, I'm going to take some ribbon. I'm going to take some burlap ribbon and um, you can see some of my stuff is from clearance. Some of my stuff I get when I am thrifting and some stuff comes from like Timu and Amazon, that sort of thing. You can get any type of ribbon you like, and certainly pretty soon you'll see Dollar Tree have some Halloween things out. I'm gonna grab some pipe cleaners and we're gonna prepare this form, okay? And you can reuse these things. You can see here, these were thrifted and they had already been used on something else. They're already kind of scraggly looking, but it doesn't matter because what we're using them for, you don't even see them when the project is done. We're simply using them as tools. We're going to start off by going around each of those little center crossbars here. Woo! Check that out. <laughs> just a little fun, y'all. Just a little fun. Okay, so I'm going to go around each crossbar, and there will be six of those. So there will be six because there are six crossbars. And these are in the inside two, you can see. And then we're going to go to the outside two. And right in the middle, there's no crossbar here, right in the middle, I'm going to wrap one here. So in total, once you get these all done, we will have 12 of these, okay? And I'm just kind of showing you here how you determine where you put it, just in case you get a little squirrely when you're doing this or you walk away from it. Just look at the one that's right before it, and we're going to go back and forth, back and forth. So inside, outside, inside, outside, halfway down easy enough to do. If you don't have pipe cleaners or chenille stems, uh, you could definitely use something like a uh, florist wire. That would definitely work too. Okay, I'm going to take this beautiful, rich, dark purple burlap fabric from burlapfabric.com, online.com, um, and put this down in the the frame. I like to put it, I like to grab up a couple of little, uh, like the last maybe inch and kind of ruche it up in my hands and then put about an inch of that into the first pipe cleaner. You're going to make sure that that pipe cleaner is on nice and tight because when you start to pull it down to do your measurements, you don't want anything to come loose. It's just a lot more work, so let's just use a little prevention um, to make your work a little bit easier. So I'll go from the inside to the outside to the inside to the outside. Just back and forth, and you can see here that I'm making, I think those are like nine inch little poofs. So this is like a little poof thing. Now y'all, I'm not, my specialty is not wreaths. Um, you know, there are plenty of crafters who do wreaths who do give you very specific information and exactly what you need ahead of time. I am not one of those crafters, but I like 
instead to kind of show you and for you to just see. And I guess that's probably because I'm a visual learner myself and watching it is just, it sticks with me a whole lot better. You know, when I look at stuff in my head, I see it in pictures, not in words or numbers or letters, if, if that makes any sense to you. You know, it just, I can remember easier this way. So just remember, if you decide to make larger poofs, then it's going to be a little bit wider, but the weight of burlap is so much more than using deco mesh that you really want to try to keep those loops fluffy but short so that it doesn't pull the loop out by the weight of the fabric. Okay, we're going to go back to where we started, twist that nice and tight on there, and then you can just trim it off. Most of the time when you put decorations on after you get your base done you don't see any of this little extra pieces of stuff so the little tails or extra pieces you don't have to be concerned with cutting that off too short because it's really not going to matter okay so what i'm doing now is just taking those pipe cleaners and the ones that go in the middle i'm kind of pushing them to the middle the outside i'm going to put them to the outside this will make it a little bit easier for me when i am laying down my next layer to know what goes where okay so six to the inside, six to the outside. I'm going to take some black and orange deco mesh, and these are um, some that I had from last year, possibly even the year before. I do believe that they came somewhere other than Dollar Tree because the quality seems to be much better than what I normally get from Dollar Tree. Totally up to you though where you get yours. You can save a lot of money using those products. But just keep in mind the quality is not going to be exactly the same. You know we save money on certain things so that we can spend a little bit more on a better quality when we need it. Right? I mean it kind of makes sense to do it that way. So we're just going to make little rolls and we're going to do stacks of three and they are going to alternate. So you can see I'm just rolling it and it's about the diameter of I would say maybe a quarter. And we're going to use a little clip to hold each little spot in place and then I'm going to have two oranges and one black so I'm gonna roll it and then I'll make sure when I put it in the clip that it is orange black orange just like that because that I don't want to move it again until we get it on the wreath so here we are putting it on the wreath there we go I'm moving it up and where you can see and I'm going to press down on those rolls while I twist that stem you see how that works and then if you do have any little phrase, you can cut those off just to keep it high-end looking. And you want it to have a good quality without looking cheap. And then we'll start on the next roll. And the next roll, this one, is going to be one orange and two black. Y'all are going to be proficient. Y'all are really going to know what you're doing with this kind of a wreath because I like to show it to you pretty often. So it looks like I'm showing you again what the orange and black looks like. But take my word for it. We're going to alternate. Two blacks and an orange, two orange, and a black. We're going to do that all the way around. And then as you lay it down on your wreath, you're going to do two orange, one black, two blacks, one orange. And you can see down here in the corner, you can see that's exactly what I am doing. I'm alternating them. If you don't want to do it this way, you don't have to use the three different colors. You don't even have to use... Uh, you could just use one color if you wanted. And if you don't want to put these on, you can leave them off. But I have to tell you, it really helps to fill out and fluff up your wreath. Continue around until it's completely done. And look how cute this would be just on its own. You could curl in those little tails right there, uh, the little pipe cleaner tails or ends. You could just curl them and you could leave them on there curly. And that would be super cute if you wanted to leave it this way. But fluff it out, you know, go around and fluff it. And y'all, this is where, oh, this is magic. Now, obviously, if you're going to be selling it or getting rid of it, I mean, uh, giving away, getting rid of it. Oh, you would want to paint the back as well, but I'm just going to save my paint for this demonstration. Now, we're going to take some type of an orange paint, and I do decide to use my chalk paint with a little sponge, br sponge brush. And I am going to dab this on all of where the lettering is and I'm going to make sure that I hold this flat so I don't get any of this orange onto the black background. My idea is to make this really pop and to be something that is totally different and I really do think that I accomplished that on this wreath y'all so please bear with me here and watch how we make this thing become something beautifully 
spooky and unique. Now, obviously the more paint that you put on here and don't dab off, that's going to be the darker the color or the richer the color that you have. But look how that orange already looks speckled across on that black. Already it is, oh yeah, it's singing. It's making my little heart sing. I'm going to leave the hat out. And make sure that there's a little, underneath the hat, there's a little end of the T. Be sure that you get that too and get all of it. Okay, so you can see here, this is the first layer, this is the orange. We're going to let that dry. After it's done, I am going to grab up some green paint and try to make this look slightly fluorescent. Hey, y'all, believe in yourself. I believe in you. Make it your own. Okay, so I'm just going to take some of this, I think it's apple green, and some of this neon yellow and mix it together. And I'm attempting to get this color to be close to this ribbon. And you can see here, it's still a little too cool tone. It's a little too, I don't know, just not quite the color that I'm looking for. So I'm going to brighten it up a little bit by adding a little bit of wicker white to it. Mix it really, really well. And then I'm going to try it, and that looks much better. So taking a smaller brush for this one, I'm going to go into the green and then tap a lot of that off. And I'm going to just layer that right on top of the orange. And y'all, look at that. Why is this reminding me of Ninja Turtle colors? I don't know why, but it is. That looks to me like it is rusty. It is something that just came out of a attic or a basement that's super creepy with eyeballs and jars and ew yeah that's what it looks like to me but I love it and I love the color combination now if you get a little too heavy-handed on any spot when you overlap this green then you can always go back over it, let it dry completely and then do your orange right back on top of it you can do this with any color combination that you have so say you have a ribbon that is purple and red and yellow. Well then go ahead and just start doing it in purple, red, and yellow, right? Then it's gonna coordinate. This is gonna coordinate beautifully with the wreath that we are doing because of the colors of the ribbon that we chose to go on here. All right, so I'm gonna take that green and I'm gonna do the witch's hat in the green. And look how bright that looks against that black. Oh, I love it. And I love how the black is still underneath where we did Witch's Brew. I absolutely love the look of this. It is popping off of that black, y'all. It really is. I did two coats of the green on this hat and let it dry thoroughly in between. And then, of course, I'm going to go back and decide that I need to add a little more of one more color. Can you guess what color I need to add? All right, then you can also, if you're letting your layers dry, go ahead and work on your ribbons. We're going to have the black ribbon and the green ribbon. We are going to alternate, and I'm also going to grab one more ribbon that is orange, and you'll see that in a second. Everything's going to be dovetailed. I'm going to have a thin orange ribbon that I'm going to use right here as a hat band. Just going to cut off a little piece. This is like a, a velvet or like a bluer type thing. I'm going to get some glue and just lay that down and put it on my hat as a little band. I'm trying to not make it completely straight. Like I put a slight bow in it to try to make it look like it's curved, like the hat's curved, you know? There's the purple. I think this is grape. Concord, maybe. And I'm just gonna add that. Now, because it's a darker color, I need to be careful not to go too heavy handed. I still like the black showing through there, so I don't want to completely cover that up. But look at the difference that makes. Those three colors together are just giving me all of the Halloween vibes, y'all. All of them. And how cute would this be, like, at your coffee bar, y'all? This would be so adorable. And I know that if you can't find this type of sign, you can definitely find little signs that are at the Dollar Tree. Right? You definitely can. So I'm taking my pieces of ribbon, and they are all dovetails. I'm just going to stack them in three. That way I get one of each pattern. And you can just decide which way you want your pattern to go. Hey, thumbs up for my little dancing skeleton over there. He's giving y'all all the moves. All right, so you know how we do these. We're going to pinch them in the middle. 
I'm just trying to get them in my little hand so I can hold it and then I will pull down my wreath and just no particular starting point you just go wherever you want I just grab the one that was close to me and I'm just going to push it down in there and hoist around my little pipe cleaners and then you can fluff your bows or your tails right now if you want to or you can wait to the very end and do it but we're going to do this all the way around so there will be 16 pieces of green 16 pieces of orange and well not 16 12 sorry about that y'all 12 pieces of green 12 pieces of orange and 12 pieces of black because we have 12 little different divisions on our wreath right okay so that's what we're going to continue to do all the way around some will be more toward the inside some will kind of overlap toward the outside and that's the good thing about this wreath is that it will be nice and full and you can see how wide it is compared to the base let's add something extra right here on this little witch's hat i know what we can do for her Mhm. Mm we are going to add a beautiful little spider right to this hat isn't that perfect I love it and I love that it has that purple in it again I'm trying to kind of draw on all those colors so that you can see them all that's cute y'all and this is a little bit heavier than it would be if you got the wooden ones at Dollar Tree the little um, cutouts but this hey you know the sky's the limit they have so many good ones there and I know you can get them like it I think Michaels and their crafting section Hobby Lobby Possibly Joanne. I've only been to Joanne like maybe twice in my entire life, so I couldn't tell you for sure. All right, so now pipe cleaners with stapler on the back is going to help hold this very hefty sign on here. It's not super heavy wood, but it is heavy enough that I don't trust glue. You know what I mean? And the wind blowing, I don't trust it. So a staple, a good old staple is going to hold it right where it needs to be. And I just use, that's my staple gun that I use in my toolkit for my crafting. And I keep very short staples. I think these are like a quarter of an inch. And then I have some 5 sixteenths. So just use a short staple. You don't want to split your, your wood if you use anything else. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to cause any damage. Because that's a, that was a lot of work. It didn't take a long time. But, you know, you have to do the, the dry time in between the layers. But you certainly don't want to mess up your pretty sign. Now, don't be concerned with the fact that there are holes in the top. Because we're going to cover that up. See how pretty and full this is? Okay, so that little hole right there. I'm going to add a dot of glue right on the, the little edge of the wire edge. Oh, by the way, I don't think I mentioned these are all wired which makes them stand out much easier too. Think of all the different ways you could do this wreath for how whatever you do, I just encourage you to make it your own. The next is going to be a Dollar Tree crystal ball. Y'all recall I did one last year, but this one's even better. Look what we're going to make. Okay, so this is just a little thrifted wood piece, but look at this globe light, y'all. It is color changing. I got this at Dollar Tree. Can you believe it? Yes, and it's Greenbrier. It is actually a Dollar Tree. And it's over there with the light bulbs and the night lights and stuff. So here it is. It's going to take, I think I had AA batteries in it, two AA batteries. I'm going to take some uh, silver paint, and it's like a dark, a darker silver. I'm going to use two of these round tags or hanging decor pieces from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some of this wire ribbon from Dollar Tree also. And of course, we always start by taking everything off. Take off your stickers, take off your hanging tags, um, and then give it a sanding if it's a, something that is wood. I just don't trust wood. I've, I've seen pieces or used pieces before that look like they would be fine, and I ended up with splinters. I don't want to do that, right? I don't want to do that. I don't have as much collagen as I used to have, so let's not do that. So dust them off after you get done sanding them, and then you need to get that ribbon, and you need to wrap around and because it's metal, I'm just going to use my stapler. I'm going to leave it in a place where it's not so obvious, where I could get it maybe to the back. But we'll paint over it, and you're not even going to see the little staple in there. Now, it can still move around freely, but I don't want the gunk from glue. So I'm just going to slide it down where it's flat. sits flat on one side, and the little overhang only goes to the other side, if that makes sense to you. Now, I'm going to measure how much I need for the base of this. And put it off. Now, I was able to use my scissors for this. It wasn't hard to do. 
but you can use wire cutters if you only have like one pair of scissors. I have a bunch of scissors over there. Okay, so I'm going to use a little floral wire this time to show you how you can do it because we can't use a stapler into the plastic base, right? We can't do that. So I'm just going to take a little piece of this. I'm going to thread it through the holes so that it catches on both ends of that, that wire ribbon or metal ribbon. And I'm going to twist it around so that it makes, it's going to be kind of like a bracelet or a band. So we can like slide it back on. Trim off the excess because we don't need that. Make sure you twist it to the outside so it doesn't take up any room on the inside and interfere with you sliding it back on. But you can see that it will slide back on and slide back off. So I'm going to grab these pieces, all of these, and I'm going to take them outside and spray paint those black. Once they're dry, I'll flip over the little wood pieces and I'll add a little bit of tape. Because of the little hanger holes there that I don't want to be as obvious, I'm going to fill those with hot glue. And then use a little bit of black paint once it's dried to just go right over that and cover up those holes. Okay, so this is now black. And we're going to slide it up over here. Now that just immediately gives it a richer look. Right? Immediately. So we're going to choose which side we want to be the base. Then I'm going to just use hot glue. This is not going to be heavy. Hot glue on the bottom of the one that was wooden that we spray painted. We're going to place it down. And this is one layer of paint, y'all. One. Okay. Press it down. I'm going to try to get it as centered as possible. And then we will do the top. I'm going to add some hot glue here. And in order to try to get it where it is the best centered possible, I'm going to get above it and look downward at it to make sure it's in the center. And this is actually the bottom that we're looking at now, so you don't have to worry about those, the spattering of the color. I was down to the end of my spray paint in that can. Note to self, get more spray paint. Okay, so now look at the difference. But now i got to go back and paint the bottom. So I did. I took this little brush in that black and painted the bottom. And then I also go back in. In the areas where, because I didn't glue it because I didn't want residue everywhere, I went back over in any of the spots where it looked like it needed a little extra love, a little deepness, a little depth in that color. And then, of course, we're going to let it dry. This is going to go right on top. So I'm going to take some of that beautiful silver color. And this is like a... I don't have my glasses on, y'all, but I'm sure you could read it on the level on the label. I'm going to take a chippy brush, go into that, tap a lot of it off, and then just kind of dry brush over this silver. This is something that I like to build up. And could I have just left it that silver color? Yeah, I could have. But it didn't have the age look that I was going for. And in order to make this piece look like it goes together, I felt like this technique really did it. This makes it look like it was bought as one piece just like this. Of course, that's my opinion, but you know, again, I encourage you to do it your own. Make it your own, and if you don't like this, you don't have to do this. You can definitely also use the glass little um, candle holders. You can use those if you don't have a wooden one, but I get this kind of stuff all the time when I'm out thrifting, so I like to use them. Plus, you know, Wood's a little bit easier to work with. It will adhere to other things a little bit better than glass, which has a tendency to kind of pop off. So, you know, just keep that in mind. And by all means, grab some super glue and use that if you need to use it. Now look at this. Isn't that pretty? That makes such a good base. And the best thing is we don't have to staple this down or even glue it down. It can just sit on the top. And that's going to make it so much easier. So I'm just kind of going in circular motion around the top of it so that it will blend in with the, the light. Let's see, we're going to do it too. I'm going to sweep a little bit over there. And this is all going to look like it belongs together, which I love. Not that we have to be matchy-matchy all the time, but you know what I mean. It feels good when something comes out the way you intended it to. But you see, you don't want to glue anything down with this because the control 
boxes on the bottom, and yeah, we don't want to do that. So right where our staples are in the front, I am going to take a little spider, and I am going to place it down. Just like it's the same type of little spider ring that came out of the the same pack from the wreath that we did. So you just cut the little thing off, and then you have a little a spider that you can use. And because his legs need to bend a little bit, I'm going to add just a little bit of heat, and then I'll take my fingers and push down on it. Just a little heat, and you got to keep it moving because they can burn. You don't want that to happen. But I want it to look like he's climbing down off of here, so I'll just hold it for a minute, which of course I edited out to keep you from being bored to death, so that it looks like he's climbing down, you see? And it just gives it a little something extra that's different. Look at that, y'all. Mm. In the end, I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's lit up. Come and join us for the Crafty Cruise Getaway, February the 24th through the 29th, and I'm going to have all the details below for you because space is limited. Come and meet me, y'all. Okay, the next is a Hocus Pocus framed art piece. This is a frame from Dollar Tree, and it's kind of a glass frame, a little float and flat frame. I don't know what you want to call this, but anyway, I thought it was really cool and would give us a lot of options for some things that we can do. So, I'm going to peel off the stuff that we know we don't need, and... I'm going to take this little chisel tool here, and I did get it from Dollar Tree. You can get it in a pack of little, uh, I think it's woodworking. Anyway, it's over there with the uh, Crafter Square stuff. And I'm just going to very carefully scrape off the wording. I'm going to leave the stars on here, and I'm just going to take off the words. You don't want to scratch your glass, so I'm trying to keep that angle very low. Then I'm going to clean it with some alcohol, and then dry it off with a clean towel. This is how it will look. The hanger, I know that in order to put the, the wall decal in there or the window cling in there, I'm going to have to have this in a different um, situation. So I'm going to move that hanger from the wide part to the narrow part. It's very easy just to tap that right back in with a hammer. Very easy to do. I popped it off with a screwdriver, and I'm just going to tack it in with a little hammer. Be careful. You don't want to hit your glass. You can protect that if you need to. Now I feel confident that that will hang up safely. So I, I want this Hocus Pocus over here, and I'm going to take this. These are last year's window cleans from Dollar Tree. So if your Dollar Tree is not putting stuff out for Halloween and mine is not, grab out the stuff that you had from last year. Get that out and start going through it. There's no sense in buying new things when you have stuff around the house already that you, uh, that you haven't used, right? If you had a vision then for it, you ought to be able to get a vision for it now. Then I'll use some scrapbook paper that I like. And I just put that uh, cling straight down on there. We're not even going to glue it. Nope, not gluing it. Love this spiderweb paper. This came in a pack that was donated to me by my friend Marsha. So, Marcia, if you're watching, thank you, and I miss you, and get yourself back to Goodwill, because I haven't seen you in forever. All right, then we're going to use a background. You don't have to do this part, but I really wanted the Hocus Pocus to pop, and if I would have put that against that purple spider web, you really wouldn't notice it that much. But I want to give it that dimension, so I'm just going to tape it very simply over the original backing that was there, because I know that's the exact right size. Make it easy on ourselves, right? Then when I use the tape to attach it, I'm only going to put the tape on the back of the paper and right over where the black of that frame is because you will see that tape if you extend it onto the glass part, right? I mean, it's glass. You can see through it. Look at what a difference it makes when you use a white behind there. It really makes it pop. So this is double-sided uh, paper. And look at the back. That's really cute, isn't it? Rest your bones. So you're going to just go through and make sure that the backing that you put on here is secured down use some type of a glue or use some type of a tape i'm just going to use uh, a little bit of glue here to help get it in place and then once the glue is dry and you flip it over look at that yeah to me that makes a big difference but i decided to make it really festive because this would be super cute for a halloween party and you're just going to add a little bit of that sparkly ribbon or if you have some paint or some glitter you can just use that Okay, sorry about my head being in the way there, y'all. I need to do my roots. I got a wedding coming up, so I really, really need to get in there and do my roots. All right, so I'm just going to fold it over on itself in the corner to continue that angle down. 
and see how I did it. That way I don't have to cut it in a bunch of places. I can just glue it down, fold it over on itself, and continue around till we get back to the starting place. I like to wiggle that bead of glue back and forth so that you don't see one solid line underneath when it dries. Again, fold it over on itself and then glue it down. You can grab your scissors and cut it off nice and flush. And this is just the easiest, the easiest way to do it. Now you could do a different color. Certainly you could do like an orange one. That would really make that orange pop in the fire below it. Or you could leave it black. Um, whatever you like best. So now I'm gonna go here and we're going to measure down about four or five inches. Yes, five inches. And I'm gonna cut a bunch of little pieces of ribbon that coordinate with the colors we've already used in our other projects because I want these pieces to coordinate. I'm going to do a little messy bow, just X's back and forth, back and forth, whatever colors you like, whatever coordinates. You can see that the stuff boiling out of our pot is that beautiful green color. So we're gonna add some green I've got some orange ribbon that's got glitter in it. I've got some orange ribbon that has the little uh, bubble looking edge. I don't know what that's called. This right here. I love that kind of ribbon. It's just cute to me. Okay, so you're gonna get it as thick as you want it. Then you're gonna take a thinner ribbon or some jute, whatever you wanna use here, and flip it over, keeping that X in the same shape that you had it before so that you're right in the middle of that that little bow and when you pull it to tie it it is going to kind of uh, flip up on the edges that's totally okay that's going to give your bow a little more body and it's going to help when you flex out those pieces or pull those pieces out that they will stay there you do not want to go i would say above five inches on these stacked bows like this because if you don't have wire in the ribbon which none of these do it will have a tendency to flop on you so rather than sticking out like a bunch of cute little octopus or spider legs, it would look really um, floppy. And that's not what I'm going for. Festive, right? This is Halloween. Hocus pocus. Excitement. It's very festive. You can leave this part off if you don't want this on yours. But I'm from the south and we kind of like our bows here. I'm going to add a little embellishment. So this is just a little spider ring. It's from a different pack. I'm gonna cut off all of the ring parts, just clip them off with scissors. And then I'll add some of these spiders here and there to this frame. See, clip off that. Very easy, very thin. And just put them here and there, like they're climbing around on there, hocus pocus. And there's a little spider web in the background. Yes, very, very festive, very Halloween-y. The next is going to be a home sign. We're going to take a ruler, of course, we want to we'll measure out our things. We're going to use a variety of tapes, some chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree, and a nice brush. A scrap of paper, again from my friend Marsha. This home plaque from Dollar Tree, and it is Greenbrier. And then this is a thrifted sign, and I have used it in the past on another project. All right, so I want this to go behind this home plaque, so I'm going to measure out and cut it off. This will fit if you place it carefully exactly where it needs to be so that it covers up the holes in the, in the word home. I'm first going to take that chalk paint and go all over the front of the sign and the sides with the black. I also have the same black chalk paint on the plaque that is um, that we're going to use for our background. So flip the home sign backwards and then flip your paper backwards and place it down where it covers the entire word. Just slide it down so that it fits and it will fit. Now this is just a regular standard scrapbook piece of paper so it will fit underneath your sign. And then you're going to let that dry. Look how nice that orange pops in that black. Absolutely adore this. But to give this more punch and make this look more like something that would be in a spooky home, we are going to add some hot glue and put this right in the center of this beautiful, I don't know, what would you call that? Filigree? The beautiful, swirly, it reminds me of wrought iron and castles and old things. How perfect. 
Yes, that is her home sign that's going to go on her porch for that lady who is extra spooky and loving that spooky life every day. And then you can just hang it off of the little hang, the little open areas on there. Here are those projects, y'all, and there are actually five of the projects all together, but we combine two. I would love it if you could subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs that are a little bit different and make you think outside the box. Also, I give you a lot of encouragement along the way. So I love having each and every single one of you here, and I love all of my comments. So if I haven't caught up with my comments lately, just know it's coming and you are very loved and appreciated. These are projects that I know you can do. If I can do them, you can do them. I'm no better than you are, right? Practice that skill. Start finding things that bring you joy. Craft those things. Keep those things. Don't be concerned about what anybody else says to you about your projects. If you love it and you're keeping it for yourself, it is exactly as it should be. We're all unique individuals, right? Yes, we are. All right, so check out this. Oh, I had to put this in here so y'all could see how beautiful it is. Look at all the colors that change. And this was $1.25. This wasn't in the plus bonus section. Mm -mm. As always, I thank y'all so much for stopping by. And I've got a video right down here in the corner that I think you'll like. See you again soon. Bye.